and welcome back. Now today we're going to talk about this really tiny little screen here. It's only a 0.91 inch SSD 1306. Um, there's a nice little library from Adafruit and uh, we can do quite a bit of this. Now it's this tiny little square and you might be thinking why are we going to have such a tiny little screen? What possible use can we have for that? Well, the answer is, if you've been following my videos in, in some sort of sequence, quite often I said well, we can add value very quickly with just you know a few LEDs, a little tiny display, just to give some information, a bit like that there now, look, that would um, help you diagnose what's going on, whether it's extra information or indeed some sort of fault finding. So this is just running through at the moment a rather shortened version of the Adafruit demo. Um, and I've got it arranged now so that, um, as you can see, the bottom bit is scrolling to the right, the top bit is scrolling to the left, and um, it inverts the screen every now and again because, well, because we can really. <laughs> I've got to demo it somehow. So this is just a little shape that you can create on the screen. You can create triangles, lines. Um, I'll show you the actual full demo from Adafruit a little bit later on, but this is one that I felt would highlight its abilities a little better. So here we can see the top was scrolling across now the bottom. You can't scroll both at the same time. You have to say which bit of the screen you want to scroll at any one time. Now unfortunately, when it inverts the screen like that, so black on white rather than white on black. It does tend to overexpose it a little bit on the camera, but um, in real life, it's extremely crisp and sharp. So uh, I'll see if I can zoom in on that and get a better picture a little bit later on in the video. But let's have a look first of all where I got this. And you know, let's face it, if you're gonna put something like this into your, into your project, um, you want it to be cheap, don't you? If it's like an added value type thing, you want it cheap. So let's have a look at the browser window. Here we are. So this is from AliExpress, but you can probably get them just about anywhere. Um, let me see. This was £1.79, um, which is, I don't know what that is in dollars. Um, let's call it two, so $2.50 maybe, if that. Tell you what, let's um, let's change the the uh, currency here and see what it says. Right, it says $2.35, a bit cheaper in fact, and it's free shipping, which is pretty good. However, as I say, it's a 0 0.91 inch, 128 pixels wide by 32 pixels high. Not a lot, but it's surprising actually how sharp the image is on here. So let's have a look at the, um, the sketch that I'm running, which is a cut down version of the a different one. So now what have I done here? Yeah, this is the um, this is the standard sketch. So Adafruit, I didn't write it. All I'm doing is hacking it about a bit. Um, I'll show you where to get that. In fact, all the information for everything we discuss on this video will be down the bottom of the video, down there. So links and all that. In fact, um, the links will be down there, but also everything down the bottom of this video is repeated on my GitHub because some people have problems getting links and so forth directly from YouTube. They sort of redirect them, which can be a bit awkward. So anyway, this is the uh, demo. It does loads of stuff or can do loads of stuff. I'm not doing loads of stuff as it is. happens. We'll run that in a minute. Um, all I'm doing is scrolling the, uh, the display, as you can just about make out down here now, scrolling it left and right various size um, uh, fonts, although the text that we're displaying down there, the top line is um, it's text number one, and the bottom line is text number two. Oh, typical, look, the text has gone off now. Um, the text number one, which is the smallest text you can get, is still very readable. Now, what I'm going to try and do, actually, is zoom in on that. Mm -hmm. There we are, look, uh, it's just gone out of focus, isn't it? Let me move my camera back and zoom in that way. It's a bit tricky getting really close. Oh, there we are. Now that, that does actually show it off not too badly at all there. Okay, that's a little bit blurry, but I don't know. I think you get the general idea. It is, take it from me though, it is quite sharp, that text. And certainly the inverted text looks a lot sharper now. So that top line 
is um, text number one. And of course, it disappears again just as we talk about it. Uh, the second line was um, text size number two. You can get text size number three, and I believe even four. That's um, three, and four absolutely fills that screen. So um, you know, there's not you can't use point sizes, not one point five or anything like that. They're fixed sizes, but that's not not too bad, is it? Not too bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I found it quite nice. The actual full demo does give a whole screen of this. And in fact, if we go over to the the um, GitHub from Adafruit, let's have a look in my browser. Here we are. So as you can see over here, this is um, a demo really of um, all the tiny little font characters you can get. Let me see if I can get that a little bit bigger. I can probably zoom in on that by making the browser window. Well, there we are, look. So that's the same size as our top layer. Um, oh, interesting, you can put characters in here, but it doesn't show the lower case, which I have, obviously, it's showing on screen now. Look. Um, but there's a fair a fair range of the fonts there. Um, not too bad at all, frankly. And as I say, 128 by 32. I mean, you know. uh, so this actual page here tells you exactly how to install absolutely everything. There's a slightly bigger version. Um, I'll put this link down below because it's quite useful. Now, the other thing that this can do is generate bitmaps, or at least display bitmaps. Now, of course, you haven't got a lot of room for 128 by 32 On the larger modules, it's probably slightly more use. And in fact, the standard demo does display the Adafruit logo when it starts off, which you'll see eventually. But um, I thought I'd play about with that just to show you what we can do. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the Arduino IDE and uh, load up a new sketch. So the first thing I'm going to do then is zoom back out, get my screen, oh, get my screen all set up, and um, and come back to you when that's done. Right, it's uploading even as we speak, so that's going to change when it does upload. Uh, probably can get a little bit closer actually. Oh, and there we are. Look, we have a PayPal symbol. Yes, I seem to spend all my money with PayPal these days, so it seemed the obvious thing to choose for an icon. Icon. In fact, what I did is I went to Google and said, "Give me all your Google images of 120 by 32," so I didn't have to scale it because, as I say, you just haven't got enough pixels to play about with. So if we look at the browser now. Um, I just typed the word in stop to see if there's anything that came up. Stop. I don't know why these came up, frankly. But anyway, there's the there's the PayPal image. Okay, so that's the one I downloaded. We could have chosen any of these. Now, you can um, scale and, and shrink and cut and crop and all sorts of things, that image. But the way you do it, it's very, very handy. There's a utility to do it. And we'll stay on the browser because here, this... Um, this site here, so it's, uh, what does that say? Well, you can read that as well as I can. Um, that's the site that lets you select an image. So we've selected the PayPal image here, or you can paste a byte array in from you know another program. But I've chosen the PayPal image. Um, I've come down here and said it's 120 by 32. I don't know why I've got two images down here. I just couldn't get rid of that first one. Look, I'm clicking it and nothing happens. Maybe it's a bug. I don't know. But anyway, I've said um, make it uh, white as the background, black as the actual code. Might look better the other way around, actually, now I thought that. Hmm. Maybe I should have inverted. Anyway, um, set the brightness threshold. That does change the picture somewhat because, remember, you've only got black or white. There's no shades of grey here. So it's either one or the other, and it can make quite a difference to your... Um, output. Anyway, the output, it says, what do you want? Do you want an Arduino code? Or do you want plain bytes? Or single bitmap? And all sorts of options here. You can't see the drop down, unfortunately. Doesn't matter. There's only four options. Um, then you have to specify whether it's horizontal or vertical draw mode. Needless to say, I chose vertical and it was the wrong one. So the image was all corrupted and didn't look anything like the image. Changed it to horizontal. 
clicked the generate code button and it gave up this huge big array whoops this entire array here this first one is that first image that I just can't get rid of I don't know what's going on there anyway this is the PayPal image this one here so I've pasted that in to the code which we'll look at here not that one we want the Arduino IDE now and not the Eclipse so there it is so I've pasted that in to here what we just saw pasted that in and then said uh, display dot draw bitmap that's the way you do it starting from zero zero so top left hand corner there's the name of that array that logo glc dot bmp that's what we called this here and then we said it's 128 wide 32 deep and I want it displayed white and that's it and then oh yes you must always have a display dot display it won't just display it automatically by saying draw bitmap or draw line or anything else yes I spent many a happy minute wondering why this didn't come out but of course display dot display is what I needed and that's it now I'm going to break into the main video because since recording that um, I've been increasingly unhappy with results from that Adafruit library because I'm thinking what is it that most people are going to be doing with this screen and I think they're going to be scrolling information a bit like what's being shown now so you get data coming in from wherever and it will just scroll up the screen um, like a television or credits or whatever Star Wars intro something like that right so I thought surely somebody has cracked this already and lo and behold they have so what I found was, let me go over to the browser window and you'll see what I mean. Here we are. Smooth scrolling on an SSD 1306. Um, unfortunately, this particular example was for an SPI version, not an I2C. So I've had to change some of the, um, the code. In fact, I've changed a lot of the code. But let's have a look. If I play this video here, you'll see what um, triggered me into actually trying to do something. So I'm playing this and you'll see that he does just a few lines. There we are, that one, two, four, and then it starts scrolling. And I thought, yes, that I've got to have some of. That's what we need. So I've taken his um, code apart and the library that he uses. Uh, the library is, in fact, Griman, I guess it is anyway, SSD 1306 ASCII. Now that one covers all bases that does SPI, I squared C, um, and lots of fonts and stuff great so it does cover a lot of stuff but I had to then change this code or at least adapt this code to get it working with I squared C done that and then I thought okay well that's that's not really enough I want more than just a four line scrolling display as he shows on here I say I I think we as Arduinoites want more than just a fixed hard coded loop going round saying line one line two line three whatever so what i did i hacked into it found out how it worked changed the code entirely well the middle bit so what we've got in the code window now um, is that basic code but changed quite a bit and if you look at the um what i've done here look <clears throat> there are in fact two versions of it but i will ignore this bit here because that was like for fixed length lines and the trouble with fixed length lines is they're going to overflow the screen so they display across the screen and then get truncated at the end we don't want that what we really want is to display a continuous string like this just however long you want to make it basically now I've stored mine in program memory just to save a space for the um, for the Arduino itself but you might be reading this data say from a a greenhouse monitor or beer fermenting thing or all the millions of things that you guys seem to read from so we want it um, continuous and we don't want it um, limited now what is limited is the on this screen here you can only display 20 lines at a time no 20 columns at a time using the particular font that I've got so this font I'm using here is LCD 5 times 7 now there are some smaller fonts available, but they are so tiny. They were illegible, unless you went right up to that display, and even then they just they weren't good. So I've stuck with a 5x7 font, and what I've done 
is basically in this main bit of the code here, which is the bit I adapted, was to say, go and read all the data and display it in 20 line chunks. And that's all very well, because if you're just going to grab the first 20 chunks and, and chop it up, uh, and then the next 20, you're going to split it in the middle of a word and all that sort of thing, that looks rubbish. So what this actual code does now, this get next line, it, it remembers where it is in the string, chops it up into 20 character chunks, and if you happen to have landed on a space, that's fine. Or if the very next character is a space, that's fine too, because it still, it still is a word boundary. If not, it then works out where the previous word was and sort of goes back, counts backwards until it finds a space, and then says, well, actually, I'm going to truncate here, which is well, all the stuff you're seeing down here is, in fact, um, all not split on words. You might get gaps at the end of the lines. It's not justified like a Word document would be, but at least it's legible and reading. In fact, I'm going to dim all the lights, going to turn all the lights off in here, zoom in on that display, and you'll get a much better idea of what it can do. OK, this looks a bit spooky, doesn't it? Anyway, the point is, when it comes back, there it is. So there's the message now being displayed up the screen. Uh, a maximum of 20 characters per line, but as you see, it's it's split on a word and it looks quite easy to read. Um, also, I've added a little tiny bit of extra value there by saying we can use special characters. In this case, I've used a percent character, as it shows you here, to in fact add a, a blank line in so you can split it up. I've also added in this in this text, which we'll see on the screen, some typical message you might come out of a greenhouse or something, just just to show you what it looks like. Um, so if you look at this, it will say in a minute, blah de blah characters, yes, yes, yes. There we are, warning critical term. That's the sort of thing that might want to be displaying up. So I'm going to put this sketch, which is pretty simple, as you can see, that's all it contains. I mean, this logic here that you're looking at simply determines where it's going to split it on that word boundary. And the rest of it just goes and grabs it out of progmen. But as I say, it's probably unlikely, unless they're instructions, it's unlikely you're going to put it into prog memory. That's program memory rather than runtime code, because you may well be reading it. But if you are going to display error messages or whatever, then this is the way you do it. Ignore this bit at the top here. In fact, I'm going to delete that before I upload it onto my GitHub, so you'll have the proper version. OK, and that is nice. This is this is something I think, yes, this is what we can use. I can use this, and if I can use it, I'm nothing special when it comes to Arduinos. I'm looking for exactly the same kind of things that you guys are looking at. So if I can use this, I reckon this is what we need. The other stuff I made of fruit was quite interesting, scrolling left and right and the up and down bit, but it didn't quite hit the nail, which is why I'm recording this now, telling you there's a better way. And uh, you'll get both bits of the video, but I'm going to cut some of that Adafruit stuff out and put this in the middle because I think this is what we need. OK, right. I think that's it now. You've seen that simple message enough. Oh, yeah, this bit over here, of course, is um, all debugging, telling me when it's found a space while I was writing it. It took me probably two or three hours this afternoon to write this, get it absolutely as I wanted to. There we are. That's it. End of. Back to the main video about the Adafruit library, which still contains some useful stuff. And in fact, there's some very good stuff about logos, if you haven't already seen that, because I don't know where I'm going to put this yet. OK, all right, thanks. OK, enough. Right, this is the full Adafruit demo then. Um, this is actually the end of the demo, where it just goes round and round displaying these little bitmap, um, what do they call them, custom characters, I suppose. They're little stars. Now, one thing. Um, I have to say, I can see already on the camera that these aren't quite in focus. Now, whether that's my camera doing that or what, I'm not sure. Let me, um, well, what I'm going to do is take this out, which means it will kill it straight away. But um, as you can see, this is this is how it comes like this, just as a little tiny screen. And these um, header pins were soldered already on that so that you can place this flush I'm imagining against some sort of panel you know see-through transparent panel or a window or something so I think that might be what my camera's struggling with because this is now being held as a um, a higher a higher height is that even English than the board and I think it's probably might be trying to focus on this rather than this so let me get some different camera um, cables and we'll see if we can get that demo in focus for you right I think we've cracked it now 
Um, I'm just holding this against a blank piece of paper and I think that works best. So you can see all the lines being generated. Um, not particularly speedily, but then we're not after speed, are we, on, on something like this. Some nice boxes, circles, a little ball, some rounded boxes. All the code for this is in the Adafruit library and their demo sketch shows you exactly how to do all this. There's all the characters, a bit of scrolling. Now the interesting thing about the scrolling is that you can't scroll up and down, or at least not uh, imminent, not evidently. I can scroll left and right and diagonally like they just showed you. Um, but I guess if you put the offset at zero, maybe it would scroll up and down. It's not something I've tried, I've only just thought of it. And here are some icons or glyphs or whatever you're going to call them that they've generated and they're just displaying those at various positions on the screen. It's a little bit a little bit jerky. It's not it's not really meant for animation, is it really? Okay, that was the um, the full demo there. If you want to watch that again, you'll have to rewind your video. This is really cacadic way of doing it. Yeah, well, there we are. You <laughs> see, the screen is small. I mean, there's no getting away from that fact. But um, nonetheless, I think it's I think it's going to find a place in future projects of mine. Because let's face it, what are the options that we have for us, um, Arduino's? We've got a little screen like this. We've got the two or four um, row LCD screens. That's 16 by 2 or 20 by 4, which I have used um, before in projects. In fact, I've got one downstairs at the moment. And on those um, LCD ones, you can have big characters and or uh, custom characters as well. Um, this this wouldn't have been a substitute for that by any means because the screen was in fact a central part of that project but this as i say is a little side in fact let me i'm going to load up my um sketch again rather than watching stars falling just to see if we can drive that point home right the code's being uploaded as we speak there we are right so this this is the simple little demo the cut down version well slightly different actually to the um adafruit isn't it because we've actually got scrolling left and right on different parts of the screen which i must admit i did have to work out from scratch i didn't quite realize how this was working but that's fine now you could what you can't do here is have a very long string expect it to sort of you know come off the edge of the screen and then scroll back across it doesn't work like that um, if it doesn't fit on that top line what will happen is it will get to the end and then wrap around to the next line which is unfortunate because otherwise you could have a nice big long string and just scroll it across like a, a marquee or something but there we are we have these limitations and maybe there are other libraries out there like the uh, SparkFun library that perhaps works in a slightly different way. I don't know. Um, okay, we've already mentioned that the inversion isn't great on camera, but it does look very nice uh, in real life. Okay, well that's fine. I think we've sort of demoed that to death now. Now I do think it's probably worth a quick look at the code. So first of all, let me uh, zoom in on the um, Arduino down there and dim the lights, as it were. Right, okay, so that's now zoomed in nice and closely down here so you can see what's going on as I explain a tiny bit of the code. Now, somewhere in this video, and because it's being shot at different times, um, I've mentioned that there wasn't any vertical scrolling. And um, indeed, that is true. In fact, if we look at the data sheet, here's the data sheet for the SSD1306. Um, this is part of the uh, the command table if you like uh, and this one here where it says hex 292a that is vertical and right horizontal scrolling and vertical and left horizontal scrolling and I was surprised that Adafruit hadn't just put in a vertical scroll a bit like what you're seeing on screen now so I spent a couple of happy hours deciphering what all this meant and working my way through both looking at the Adafruit library and my own code and whatnot and uh, I was a bit disappointed to find this little lie down here it says note no continuous vertical scrolling is available and I thought ah maybe that's why it's not working for me then but as you can see down here it is working 
Um, now, is it working because of what I did or despite what I did? But anyway, the point is I've, I've tweaked the code, the uh, Adafruit library, to give us a new function now using this 292a hex command code. And if you're into this, this little display, no reason why you shouldn't be, then you probably will want to look at the data sheet just to make sure you've got everything right. You don't have to, I mean, you can just look at the, the library itself, but it's always good to look at the data sheet, I find. So, um, back to the code then. What I've done, these um, these two tabs at the top, they're the ones that describe the Adafruit library. There's the header, and all I've done is put in a new entry here, the line that's actually highlighted at the moment, and that allows for vertical scrolling. So it's all very well having a line in the header file, but you have something in the CPP file uh, behind it, right? CPP, C++. So in there, what I've actually done, let me just get my uh, screen back. Right, so in, in here I've added a new entry, this one here, so I've called it um, start vert scroll, just keeping in with the naming standards of Adafruit. Um, let's have a look, you've got a start and a stop, but there are some restrictions on that, and then this boolean value, scroll up equals true. Normally you probably do want to scroll up, but you don't have to, as the display is showing there, you can do it both ways. So what this does then, you first of all, in this little bit here, you set the vert the um, well, the, the, yes, the vertical scrolling area, and this is a standard. Just to say the entire screen is scrollable. Now, the odd thing about this is this is where we set the vertical and horizontal uh, screen command, and then we have to tell it in these A, B, C, D, and E values what it is we exactly want to do. A is not used at all. We just set that to any old value; it doesn't matter. B, the start value now. By trial and error and looking behind the scenes I've discovered that if you set it to less than four you can forget it this will all break up and half scroll and you get bits broken off and everything so four it has to be um, this is the delay the interval between scrolls we've currently got it to hex zero which doesn't mean zero delay it means zero means five whoops five frames between scrolls now you can set it to two three four five 6428256. Now these last ones, these 6428256, that is exceedingly slow. It just it just goes up the screen a beep, 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 just a tiny little bit at a time. That's not what we want, not for sort of smooth scrolling as you're seeing on screen here. So I've set it to five. Um, I've tried out two, that's really quite quick actually. But you can experiment with that if you want. Um, so that's that value. Um, then the stop value, now once again this has to be 1f, hex 1f, which means the whole screen. And then finally I've just added in this scroll up, scroll down thing, so if it's true it will scroll up, and if it's false it scrolls down. Um, which I discovered worked, so I thought well why not have that as a feature. So that's the only bit I've added in to the Adafruit library. You know what I should do of course is fork that library on GitHub, but yeah, I'm not going to. I'm just going to put a copy of this um, on my own GitHub just to say that I've added this little bit in and let somebody else take it forward from there because it's all in the public domain, isn't it? Or GPL license domain, which means you can do what you like with it. So the actual demo code now, then this was the original Adafruit demo code, which basically showed off their library, and you've seen a little bit of that. But what this is going to do now, at the moment, all it's doing is my scroll test, which is why that's getting a little bit boring down here. But it does actually do everything that um, I've shown you in this video, either before this bit or what's coming next. I can't remember uh, where I've got to in the video. Um, so that's it. That's, that's, so if, you, if you're not interested in the library and you're not interested in the data sheet, you can use this vertical scroll text. And that actually is down here. There we are. Uh, vertical scroll text and you just well that's the that's the little tiny head a bit at the top where it says last heading here at the moment then it says hello Arduino it's, that's just to show you that you can change the um, text on the display in flight so when you start scrolling this this device it's hardware scrolling so you've you've set it off and it will just continue to scroll without any more input from the Arduino it's not like we're somehow redisplaying many many frames or something and then you know moving 
pixel by pixel down the hardware within this actual um, screen does all that for us so having triggered the scrolling mechanism whether it's vertical or, or diagonal left right or just horizontal or doesn't make any difference you set it off and then you can change the contents of what's being scrolled on the fly so in this little example i'm changing here the message that gets put at the very top the small one here we are like, even more to read it says now it's just changing on the fly and when it comes back it will change again to the next message uh, let's just wait for that to there we are last heading here it says okay and then that standard ssd 1306 in the middle which of course could be anything and start scrolling upwards true and then start scrolling downwards because that's false that's it it's pretty easy isn't it so i reckon if you if you figure this out you'll probably figure the rest of it out within the cpp as well to be quite honest it's um it's a bit odd though isn't it that the data sheet says you can't do vertical scrolling but well obviously you can so i don't know what's going on there really maybe they meant under i don't know under some conditions i don't know we'll leave it there though it was just I thought it was just interesting to show you a little bit of this this code to show you how easy it is. I mean, this this little uh, method here or function here is doing what you're seeing on screen now. There's no difference to that. And for the price, I think you know. Well, in my humble opinion, I think that's not bad. One pound seventy nine. Um, if you can get one of these bigger ones for one pound ninety with free shipping, I haven't found one here, but maybe Banggood or Gearbest or even Amazon these days. Okay, I think that probably wraps it up then. There's no more to be said for then. Uh, I hope you found it useful and you never know, you might actually want to implement one of these into your next project. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.